stop mast or wedge brake overhaul. First we're going to remove the springs. Note the how the springs are put into the assembly to clear the axle. That's important you get them back in the right way. We're going to use a set of brake spring pliers and remove the, the brake springs here. And we'll remove the brake spring. Lay it out in a position we can remember how it went together. Always a good idea if you're uh, when you're doing this uh, for the first time just to uh, get the manual off the internet. This is a Rockwell product so arvinmeritor.com. The shoes come off. Notice uh, the shoes. A couple things about the shoes. They have a long and a short radius on them. You'll see that the long radius here is marked adjuster end. That has to go to the side with the adjusters. The opposite end goes onto the solid anchor plungers. We can also look at the brake lining to make sure that it's not damaged or cracked. They usually put these scallops in the shoes so that you can look through the inspection port. This rubber inspection port right here. That rubber comes out and then the technician can see where the minimum lining thickness is for quick visual on brake shoe depth. Minimum thickness on these at the lowest point is 1 32nd of an inch or 0.8 millimeters above the rivet. We can use a depth micrometer or a tire gauge to check the depth on them. Next we're going to remove the air cylinder. Uh, to remove the air cylinder is quite straightforward. We remove the air line and then there's a collet nut right here. Just take your hammer and punch and loosen that collet nut off. Back it off. It acts as a jam nut and then we can just simply unthread our air cylinder. Once we pull out the air cylinder, it'll expose the wedge and you can see inside there how the piston inside there is going to contact the wedge assembly here and push the wedge out. Now on the heavy duty series, they have two air cylinders, one on each side just to give you more power for application. This one's a single.